Thanks, Hazel. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What a dramatic day we've already had here at the Betfred.com World Snooker Championship. And tonight, the Crucible is absolutely rocking once again as we prepare to finalise the lineup for the Crucible last eight. We are in for a super session of snooker. Please welcome, first of all, a player now into the second week of a simply superb Crucible debut. After his win over former champion Sean Murphy, his confidence has soared. He took his chances last night to give himself a great opportunity. This could be a career-defining session. The pride of Neath, the Welsh warrior, Jamie Jones. And his opponent, he's also had a superb run so far. It started with a great win over Stephen Lee. He is absolutely still in this match. A former Welsh Open runner-up, PTC Grand Final semis this season. But this is the big one for the Witness Viking, Andrew Higginson. And here on table number two, please welcome a player who yesterday produced some of the best form we've seen from him here in years. His break of 128 was so good, he got a standing ovation. He was, quite simply, sublime. On the verge of a 14th Crucible quarterfinal, three times a champion of the world, blink and you'll miss him, the Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan! <laughs> And his opponent, one of the finest Welsh sportsmen of the last two decades. He nicked the last two of the session yesterday to give himself some belief. Winner of 18 ranking event titles in all, twice a champion at the Welsh and the UK. He's also a double Crucible winner. He's the Welsh potting machine, Mark Williams! <laughs> You can follow the Higginson Jones match on the red button or online, but for now we're going to stick with table two. Five world titles worth of talent on show. And calling the shots for us this evening, John Parrott and Willie Thorne. Good evening. Thank good you, evening, Hazel. Good gentlemen. evening, everybody. Frame and if you thought that was exciting this afternoon, Royals the second session of this match was Canada equally as good, obviously. Please. The result didn't come in the second session. The result will come in this session. Ronnie O'Sullivan, as Dennis Taylor mentioned in the pre-match interviews, managed to win nine frames on the trot against the former world champion. John, it's a... T well, it's almost, almost impossible for 11-5. Yes. <clears throat> I was very impressed with Mark yesterday, though. You know, 11-3. Must have been tempting to look for the exit with that, but he stuck in there. Make a break of 86 and then managed to win the last one. Difficult when you're playing against someone who was playing as well as O'Sullivan was because he really was awesome yesterday. Yes, his great friend, the renowned artist, Damien Hurst, has been with him for his first match and a half and I'm sure that Damien seems to have an influence on Ronnie and gets him concentrating hard and He's just played flawless so far. Two world champions on show 
in the crucial of death and we've got another one watching. Dave Wolfie Adams, the cover city. World Dart Champion, Martin Wolfie Adams, of course. He's a fantastic champion as well. And looking at two other champions playing just in front of him. Well, nice to find a plant at the corner of the pack. Let's just drop it in dead weight. Mark Williams, one. Probably won't get any great advantage from this because the pack at the moment is, is very tight. It'd take a really poor shot from Ronnie to leave him in here. One. But I've had a little shot that was. And I think he's on the pink in the middle. Played the stun to the edge of the pack. He can pot the pink, but unfortunately he's going to... I don't think he can apply the screw he needs as we see that clever little shot to hit the edge of the pack. The one below the black doesn't appear to pot in the right-hand corner, and I don't know how he can get on in the left unless he really plays a deep screw shot, and that's uh, unlikely at this stage. I said unlikely, he tried it, and if he'd have brushed by the pack of reds, he would have been on that red, Seven. just below the black. Great effort. Mark Williams, seven. pocket but it could have been worse might play a bit of a shot to nothing here with the plant at the top Not too bad, actually. There's a couple of reds that are available, but neither of which he can get back to Bork. So the red that's tight on the right-hand side, cushion half ball off that, and that may free the black. And get the cue ball in back up the table behind the brown spot area. He's looking at a possible shot to nothing, but I can't quite see how he can get around the back of the black. Well, he found one, didn't he? I didn't think he could see enough of that one. One. Shows you how well he's queuing. These are tough shots on here. Super fast cloth just to get these dead weight. Ronnie O'Sullivan, one. Yep. I'm a bit surprised how poorly he's played it, but. You can definitely make a mess of those. Last thing you want to do with them is not reach.
Well, the one that's on the pink spot, we could cut it very, very thin and get back into Bork, but he'd be pushing red towards the right-hand corner. So he's found an alternative. I don't quite, can't quite see from here which one it is. And then he has got a shot where he can drop on the red on the, the top cushion off the side cushion if he wants. But of course he didn't get that right, he'd be leaving a red near the pink spot, so... What's he found here? Well, whatever it was, it was wrong. Black's come into play, but still <coughs> out of commission. So he may have to work on the pink for a few shots. Just wondering whether that red is on the pink spot, so... You have to be careful. If you go straight for the pink, it's going to go in the middle of those two reds on the black spot, so that wouldn't be much good either. Well, that's tight. Why? It's a good point, that, John. I don't know whether Ronnie's noticed that yet. And if, he ha if, it, if that is the scenario, he might even take the blue or the brown or yellow it's uh, it's difficult unless he plays a little cannon on the red that is on the pink spot now which is on I mean that's as good as anything just nudge that red off the pink spot well he feels that it's going on the black spots it's not going to cause a problem I think Ronnie's made a mistake here I don't think he's realized let's have a look at his face I don't think he realizes you see seven it's a little bit annoyed with himself there Well, pink and black being out of commission, but he's getting the right side of the blue all the time. Twenty-six. His touch is just quite remarkable. It really is. You see players here and two or three shots and they've lost position wrong side of the blue. He's always on the right side of it. Well, that could be the commentator's curse, couldn't it, after the next red? <coughs> You're under pressure here, John. 41. 32. Just. 37. 38. Uh, just left handed, folks. Really does hit the ball pure both handed. <laughs> Unbelievable. What an advantage that is. <coughs> Little bit of mileage in here and trying to just kiss the black, that would be that in his eye line. Because then it knows whatever kind of kiss he gets is gonna be on a red, so he's, he's actually played it too well, he's gonna finish hampered. Beautiful shot that. Forty-three. Well, where pink and black were at the start of this break, it was hard to see him making more than thirty. But he's in forty-three and counting. Just the one more loose red, the one in between pink and black. 
And that is absolutely perfect. Maybe the one below the pink pots as well. Forty-six. Just have to flick this red out if you can. No surprise, it's perfect. What a touch this boy has got. Honestly, this break at the start of it. Did it honestly look like he was going to win the frame off it? I don't think so. 46 in front, pink 52, so obviously now is going to win the frame off it and uh, quite remarkable break. We all get excited about century breaks, but this has been as good as a century the way it's compiled this break. 60. Eleven reds, one yellow, one brown, five blues, five pinks. Three pinks, I should say, not five. Surely not. Not tight on the cushion, perfect. <laughs> Found the police. Found the police. Genius in the house. Checking to see what colour he needs to make it. Oh, what a shame. He was checking. He looked up, looked, looked up the scoreboard to see if he could make a century with the pink. Unfortunately, let the pink didn't go in. Ronnie O'Sullivan goes one away from victory and he leads 12-5. Now, we thought that it was highly unlikely that Sir Mark Williams would be able to stage a comeback, but it's looking extremely doubtful. Now, can you just assess Ronnie O'Sullivan's mood, his demeanour and indeed his form over the last couple of days for us, Steve? Well, it seems since he's been here uh, last week, uh, and don't forget this tournament's uh, over a week old now, um, but he's been in, in good shape mentally. Uh, his form looks superb. I've always felt that the um, second week uh, of the tournament is where the players that seem to be the runners and riders for the final stages start to show a bit of form. And it would appear, obviously anything can happen in any one match, it would appear that Ronnie O'Sullivan is in the type of form that can win his world championship for him. Yeah, he's chasing his first world title since 2008. And when you think about the roller coaster that he's been on in the intervening years, I mean, it was only a couple of months ago, really, that he won the German Masters and thereby circumvented the need to actually qualify for this event. I mean, that's how close he came to dropping out of the 16 and having to really work his way back into this event. That's right. Uh, not, not because of his play. That's because he dropped out of a number of tournaments. Mm. But even so, um, he would have been a tough player to have play met in the qualifying stage. Just don't put it past him, he probably would have qualified Indeed. and been playing this type of snooker. Uh, but his game looks in great shape and uh, you know, he's the, one of the very few players that other snooker players bow down to. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in the commentary box, it's just the, the, the standard of play he can produce. Well, we were talking yesterday about how Mark has struggled to face up to Ronnie in the last few years. In fact, it's been ten years since he beat Ronnie and he's got it all to do if he's to turn that around there. Well, you join us just when the genius has made a mistake. Attempted safety shot and unfortunately caught the blue. He's playing this really slow to get onto the black in the same pocket. Mm, didn't fancy it much. We played with check side, so perhaps he did. Thank you. As he lost the cue ball, it's mighty close. Do you think he's going for a maximum already? Well, it's not beyond the realms of possibilities when you think you're 12 5 behind. It's the only way of getting a few quid out of the tournament, isn't it? That's unlikely he's going to win the match, and we know he can make one four sevens. 16. Oh dear. Mark Williams, 16. That was a very much unlike Mark Williams shot. He 
he's one of the best slow ball rollers that, in the game. You know, he very rarely misses a, a slow roll through. One of those players that bless with being hit plain ball, and that's the key on these cloths. Hitting plain ball, but he put a little bit of unwanted side on then. Why? Ready at the back of the cluster, which if he pots, will knock the others all over the place. Just see how he plays this, whether he plays it with top spin or he screws it, but as long as you get the pot, we're still in the driver's seat. Nice. Top spin then. <laughs> and when he's finished, he can. Counts himself quite unlucky. It was looking all right till that red flicked the cue ball onto the side rail. May just be a safety shot. Just seem to have a look in the balk area, just see where he's left to leave the cue ball so he covers that red with the blue. Brando. Ronnie O'Sullivan, nine. <coughs> Not a great uh, amount of alternatives for Mark Williams here. He'll just be playing the dump shot here, leave the cue ball on the top. Well, there's a cut of a red in the left-hand middle that Ronnie might take on. He'll probably be kissing into the green if he takes it on, so that may make him a bit reluctant to try it. Doesn't fancy either the potable reds in the middle. So it looks like he's decided on trying to get the white back in behind the black spot area. Oh, nearly a fluke. Shot from Mark that. Cue ball tight enough to the top cushion, so difficult to raise the cue in the air and get back to that same area. Can't see where he's going to leave this safe actually. Got to hit this properly, the cue ball will be bouncing here. about as good as he could do really but the cue balls come off watch this jumps up in the air there always difficult Mark Williams has got one in the center pocket and this is fraught with danger <laughs> well played Mark Williams I think he got up very quickly I don't know whether he had a kick but he was up off the cue very quickly there I think he thought he missed it for a second Twelve. 
Top Team. Sixteen. Seventeen. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Well, all credit to Mark Williams. Professional pride still there. Knows Ronnie only needs the one frame to advance to the quarter-final, but he's still in there punching. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Well, not the best kiss, not the desired kiss, but he still has the green available in the middle. They played for the blue in the corner. Still has a choice of playing the blue, but obviously a lot more difficult than it would have been without the kiss. 25. Good recovery. He needs that right to travel. I don't think he's on anything. That's the only place. Another two inches either way is on the red. Mark Williams, 32. Well, a lead of 39 for Mark Williams. And, well, when he has a choice of shots, he could play the one that's up near the balk line. Or he may choose to move the red on the left-hand side cushion off, but it's the long pot, is it? Pure was that. Right through the middle of the white. <coughs> well, that's just unbelievable when you consider this match is over 25 frames. Ronnie O'Sullivan would be pleased with 50% uh, pot success rate on long pots. Yeah, that's one in every two, because you're half the time you're playing a shot to nothing. So over an 81%. I, I guarantee that's the highest he's been in the last four or five years. Six. 25 of 31, I've just been told in my ear, that is the long game. And uh, if he can clear up from here, this will be another very, very good clearance. He came to the table 30-odd points behind. Doesn't have a great angle on this red, that's why he's looking at the other one. But he can screw back for blue or green or even the pink. Doesn't have to run through for the black. Oh, it just finished slightly awkward. Just off straight. 14. And no problem when you're so ambidextrous. <coughs> Could you make 20 left handed, John? I mean, a lot of players can't hit the ball left handed. Wouldn't make eight. It is definitely. A gift. There's a few players now that Brussel, I thought, was very impressed with him. I think he'll be a future star. Matthew Stevens is obviously pretty good left handed. Now, just these three quarter ball angle on the pink, he'll be certain to get onto the last red. These next two shots will tell whether Mark Williams is going to spend any more time in this World Championship. Sullivan, 19. Yes, he was literally two shots away from going into the quarterfinals. Didn't expect him to miss that. So 
So just kill a red. Right. And Mark Williams will keep this game alive. <coughs> well, I need another colour off the last red if he takes a bought colour. So that unexpected miss from O'Sullivan leaves Mark 15. Williams to clear up. And well done to him. <coughs> Showing a very Thank good you. attitude. Mark Williams, 24. And well, Mark Williams has kept this match alive. O'Sullivan had a chance to pinch it. But Mark Williams reduces his deficit to 12-6. Well, Ronnie looked like he was uh, all out to win the last frame there with this shot with the rest, John. Unlikely miss, wasn't it? Yes, I mean, it's difficult to make uh, sort of any excuses over it really, it just, it, you know, he looked at initially like he was going to play it ordinary, then he had to get the, the extension on his cue, but even so, I mean, you'd expect him to knock this one in, just off straight, no reason why he should miss that, the balls he's potted today, but, well, he did, and Mark Williams managed to clear up, so, well done to him, he's still in there, punching away, 12-6, mission impossible really, but personal pride involved. Now, Mark Williams has gone out at the hands of Ronnie three times in the last six years. When you, when you come up against the same opponent in the same circumstances in the same venue all of these times, does it begin to get to you? Does it become a mental block after a while, Steve? I suppose it can. It would help if you know, Mark can beat him in other events mm. to sort of get a bit of a glimmer of a hope. But obviously, I'm not too sure with Mark whether he does study the form guide that strongly. Uh, as it is, he probably feels as do many, that you know, Ronnie O'Sullivan is such a genius with a cue that, um, that anything he does is sort of overshadowed. And one of Mark Williams' strengths, I've said it earlier in one of the other programmes, great artistry has Mark Williams, but unfortunately he's up against uh, somebody who probably has more in Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie O'Sullivan, you Well, I'm sure Ronnie O'Sullivan's breaking off, hoping this will be the last time he breaks off this evening. 12-6 in front. Two more frames before the mid-set interval. I'm sure Ronnie'd like to get it over before then if he can, just to get as much rest as possible. It's definitely available to Mark Williams, this. Just sneak past the brown. Well, he was upon that shot very, very quickly, wasn't he? He knew he hadn't hit that good. The middle one of the three, just to the below the blue wall pot, as we see Mark taking this shot in the game. And there is, amazingly enough, a chance to get into the black here. I wonder whether we'll risk it. Well, there's your answer. One. And with him playing that shot, you know what's in his mind at the moment. And he's only scored one. Ten. 
And for once, I agree with you entirely, Mr. Thorne. It. <laughs> it's only eight, but there you go. One red, one black. That's very nice of the director to put that in, isn't it? Nine. Just count them when there's 15 there. Well, there were two very good attempts this afternoon to equal Stephen Hendry's maximum made on the first day. This may be another one. 16. 17. 24. Well, clearly the red to the left of the black is causing a problem here. If he's not dead straight, he may not be able to play for black. Which he couldn't, so that's the end of my prediction. That would be 146 instead. What it also tells me is he's keen to get this match over with. As you said, Willie, nice to get it done and dusted and back to the hotel, have a nice off evening off. Thirty-two. Thirty-nine. Oh dear, Forty. that was careless. That was careless. Massive gap to go through the reds there to get onto the black. Yellow ball. Just, I know he's got a relatively new tip on, which is obviously playing very, very Brown well. But now and again, the, you get into a ball, you really get into it, and you really get into this. It's the gap he had there to go through the gap. Massive Four. gap. hit the one that's nearest the pocket and ideally off three cushions so he won't leave it on if he catches it off two cushions. <clears throat> Foul and a miss. Mark Williams, four. I don't see that he can hit that red. I thought he was playing the one that's nearest the pocket. And I can't understand why he would want to play that red next to the black John. No, I think he may be struggling to hit the one that's near the pocket, but the angle's the way they are, but we'll soon see. He's playing the same one again. Well, and I miss. Mm, Mike it's not on four. that shot, I'm afraid. Mark Williams, yeah, we often talk on commentary about how cushions slide. Once you've hit the second cushion, they widen a little bit more. And if you happen to hit the third cushion, it widens even more. Now he was 40 points in front a few moments ago. He's now only 28. I'm afraid, Ronnie, this shot's not on. Bow and a miss. Mark Williams, four. Foul and a miss. Mark Williams, four. 
Funny thing is, the last one he's played is probably the right way to play a side cushion and come off from behind so you can just rest on it. Yeah, the I first three or four, John. He was playing three cushions, wasn't he? Now he's, now he's decided the four cushion escape and that is on. <coughs> Doesn't want to slide past it. Matt Williams, four. I think it might be going back. Well, it's not quite the record yet. Might be a record for Ronnie, though. I don't think I've ever seen Ronnie miss uh, seven snookers on the trot. Obviously, it's very, very simple to hit one of the other reds, but that would leave the, the game on, so he's got to persevere because he knows this is the only red he can hit and get safe. This is perfect, I think, if it bounces. Oh, no, it slid by it again. Oh, and I missed. Mark Williams, four. Well, John was just about to tell you the record was 48 points. We're at 28 now. So five more misses. Another record he'll hold. And I commentated on that one as well. Fail <laughs> and a miss. I don't know whether well, he's got somewhere to go, but he just looked at his watch. He was suggesting he could be here a little bit longer than he thought. Mark Williams won't mind. Could win a frame without getting off his seat. That's never happened. Oh, dear. That's uh, not going to get there either. Bow and a miss. Mark Williams, four. An inch further to the right, Ronnie, and you'll hit it properly. Thank you. Not the other side of it. Oh, he's hit it. Well done. <laughs> but I mean, good. 36 points away. He eventually hit it. And as you can see, that was uh, the only way, really, he could get, a, get in the safe position or a safest position. I've done that myself plenty of times. You don't make your mind up what shot to play, and in the end, you get down and don't play any. <laughs> he was thinking of all sorts there, Mark. Well, a lot of cue power needed here. He wants to get back up for the blue bought colours. He's decided to play for the black, and that's a dangerous, isn't it? Would be if you didn't cue like him. Well, he knows how important this black is. If it goes in and gets on a red, it could be all over. It. Yes, John mentioned sometimes you're in two minds, but he's mishit that by two or three inches. Played a half ball and hit quarter ball. Nine. Well, he'd be very disappointed not to wrap up the match from here. Put these reds in the middle of the table if you're practicing. 16. Obviously, we never shocked at the result when people like Hendry and O'Sullivan play, but I was a bit shocked at the, obviously the scoreline with Hendry. I'm a little bit shocked at this one. I thought this would be a close match. Okay, O'Sullivan may have been favourite coming into it, but. I thought it was a 13, 8, 13, 9 match. 24. 
Lofty two. Lofty three. Well, this really is a fabulous chance now to close the match out. If you had to give the 36 points away, it would have already been enough in front. Yes, and he was absolutely Four. virtuoso yesterday afternoon. Six frames of the finest snooker I've ever seen played at the Crucible. Absolutely wonderful Four he was. And Mark Williams just had to sit and watch and appreciate and when he's in this form and hitting the ball as well as he is and he's as focused as he is he is a serious handful for anybody in this tournament Forty yes with the result today he's already gone favorite with your trump going out now two to one favorite before 49. the evening session to win this tournament yes and what a matching prospect we've got with the neil robertson who i thought in his the second part of his opening session against six. dave gilbert was absolutely awesome so it's a, a match to relish. Yes, deserve it of the one table situation, but that's the way the draw is. O'Sullivan had dropped down the rankings. He wouldn't have expected to play nil at this early stage, the quarter finals, but that's the scenario now. They'll be pretty pleased with himself. It'll be interesting to see his press conference to whether he. He feels like he's playing well. 65. He certainly looks like he's playing as well, as well as he has done for two or three years for me. I don't think I've seen him hit the ball this well for a while. 65. Well, once again, we should have had a century in the first frame this evening. We could have had a century in this frame, but Ronnie O'Sullivan looks superb. Mark Williams offers his hand in congratulation. Ronnie O'Sullivan goes through to the quarter final and wins the match by 13 frames to six. Well, Ronnie clock watching at one point, and so are we. We're against the clock as we come to the end of our transmission at the moment. But uh, a quick reaction from Steve, and hopefully from Ronnie as well. In the end, straightforward. Uh, but he had it all to do in that second session, and that's where it was won. Yes, and I think uh, he, he actually sort of moved a bit through the gears. Uh, Mark Williams, who's had a very good season early on, perhaps faded a bit towards the end. It is a long season. We'll be a bit disappointed. But sometimes when you're sitting there watching Ronnie O'Sullivan play, you just got to say. Well done. Indeed, well done indeed. And we'll uh, pass on our congratulations via Rob Walker to Ronnie. They're chatting now. Ronnie, those six frames yesterday gave you a superb platform. That was fantastic to watch. You know, credit to Mark because he's, uh, you know, he's a top two, three player in the world. So, you know, he's had a, a good season. I know he hasn't played brilliant towards the end, but he got to the final of the first two ranking events of the season. Um, you know, he's been probably the most consistent player over the last three years. So, massive credit to Mark. And, uh, you know, he played, uh, he made it hard for me out there. And that's probably why I played as well as I did, because I knew I had to, you know. So, a lot of credit has to go to Mark. You look as though you're really up for this World Championship. You know about being up for things, don't you? You're the, you're the most up person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> But how are you feeling? Because you're certainly queuing really well and people are getting excited about your run at this year's World Championship. I'm feeling with my fingers, you know, it's a good, it's a good way of feeling. <laughs> well done today, Ronnie. All right, cheers, thanks. <laughs> well, he's not giving much away. <laughs> uh, just assess the prospects against Neil Robertson because when I look at the stats, that's three centuries from Ronnie so far, five from Neil and 11 50-plus breaks. It's been fantastic scoring for him. Yes, uh, it's a clash of the big guns uh, early in this uh, in the quarterfinal stages, and a few surprise names are going to be in that quarterfinal lineup, and perhaps a few surprise names in the semi-final. We don't know, but you could argue that on paper, Neil Robertson versus Ronnie O'Sullivan, as we currently speak could have been worthy of the world final. Indeed, yes, absolutely. And of course, Neil Robertson aiming for a second world title after he won it in 2010, at Ronnie going for a fourth. So something has got to give. And of course, the quarters start tomorrow. Now, who is going to be in the quarterfinal lineup? The last of the second round matches will be completed this evening. And just to update you, Andrew Higginson has won the first couple of frames this evening. So he trails by only two now. It's 10-8 to Jamie Jones from Neath in Wales. And if you want to keep watching that, one it is available online and on the red button for you right now until its conclusion uh, and if you have of course other things to do no worries i'll be back 20 past 11 after news night to round it all up for you in the meantime from steve and me tarafanite